is episode number three then. My name is Martin Devlin. I work for The Platform. You can download the app and listen with me. Broadcaster, a commentator, a man of much talent and an old mate. Apologise to me, Mark Watson. Welcome back. Thank you, Martin. Uh, lovely to be with you. It's been a remarkable couple of weeks with the Commonwealth Games. Uh, but look, before we delve into the issues on a more serious note, I just want to pay tribute to one of the good guys in the media, um, David Leggett, a uh, well-known journalist, particularly with the New Zealand Herald. Um, passing away suddenly while on holiday in Italy with his family and uh, just terribly sad. Uh, you, you're in this industry and we both know that it can be a bit cutthroat and um, genuinely one of the really, really good genuinely guys. Genuinely one of the good guys. Uh, and look, I worked with him briefly um, when the Herald and News Talks had be merged, which is like asking Labour and National to get together in the house and form a company. Um, and he was one of those guys who was always, always really generous of himself, of his time, uh, of his expertise, uh, you could always have, sit down and have a chat with him. Um, Andrew Alderson, a good mate, says that he was just the world champion on the curry. He said you'd never compete with Lego on the curry. Um, he 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 is. He just he and you got to look at the human side of it first. And there aren't many newspaper people I'd say that about, but that guy there, I no, really like. I, I, I really like. Look, I agree with you. You know, thoughts go out to his family, David Leggett. Apologise to me. Let us kick it off with the one topic that everyone in this country is talking about, and it now seems inevitable. As much as I don't really agree with it, I, you know, I mean, maybe I'm the last passenger on the train. I can't see how Ian Foster now survives. Um, it appears that Mark Knight of the Long Knives Robinson has sharpened the blade, and that somebody is actually going to replace this guy. So, where are we at with the All Blacks as far as our team goes, Watto? I. I was watching boys getting smacked up by men and it was an embarrassment to me watching them lose to South Africa given the fact that I haven't seen an all-black side so comprehensively physically beaten. We have players that are incapable of breaking a tackle, of busting a line, of mano on mano getting past their opponents. Mm. And and you, you can you can you can write it any which way you want and you can blame whoever you want, but ultimately I have severe doubts whether anyone is going to come into that team and coach this current group of players to be any better than they currently are. But that's it. And you summed it up. This current group of players, this current group of players are not good enough. This current group of players, I think, are too cool for school. I think the Players Association have a, have a lot to answer here in terms of the way the players have been put up on a mantle, how much control, how much power they have, down to how many times they're allowed to train a day, certain times of the day, the amount of money that they are getting paid. And how often do we hear, let's bring out the violin about how tough it is how to be an All Black. Is, mate. How you hard, don't you don't get it, you, is, don't get, you don't get it, you don't realise how gladiatorial it is and how these guys constantly need to rest and rotate. But I'm going to say this, and I've said it a couple of weeks ago, I still put a lot of what is happening back on the previous administration as well. I remember saying four years ago, where are our ball carrying front rowers? Where are the Steve oh, no, McDowell's? No, no, we don't we, have those, mate. We, we, have, we, have, we have ball playing we, we props are, is what we, we have. We don't have ball carriers. We have we have ball players and guys that get told to go out there and express themselves, Mark. Do you know what the South Africans do? They express themselves by smashing the living crap out of us and winning the ball, mate. Yeah, yeah, but look, look, Ian Foster does have to go. The problem with Ian Foster for me is he doesn't seem to be a coach who's ever really on the cutting edge. And I think in the all-black job, you need to be on that cutting edge. Whatever you think of him, like I say, this is not anything about Ian Foster the person, but he's never really had that vision. He's never really... I mean, I've just watched the evolution of this team. There has been, no, there's been no evolution. Since 2017, no. this team has not progressed at all all. And I think the likes of Sir Graham Henry, I think the likes of Steve Hansen all have a lot to play in this old boys network that put him in place and convinced us and told us that he was the right guy. You're right. Who comes in now? Clearly it is going to be Scott Robinson. No, it's not. But, you but, see, this but, is the problem. This is, And this is what we're hearing and maybe this will change over the next few days as you listen to this podcast, people. But from what we're gathering, it ain't him. And so there's no way I would think if I was Scott Robinson, I'm taking this Poison chalice, unless you give it to me till 2027. I'm not going into next year's World Cup. Oh, I'm no. going to go the World no, Cup after. Has to, that would mean to be a, a five-year yeah, contract. It has to be a long-term And there's contract. no way that Mark Robinson's going to sign that. Um, what we're hearing is that it might be somebody like Joe Schmidt gets it for this World Cup, and then maybe they decide again, or maybe he goes a couple of years. But look, if I'm Razor Robinson, I wouldn't touch this with a barge pole. Why would you, mate? You're on a loser. This, this group of players is not winning yeah, in France I, next I, year. I, I wanna, you know that. I want to say this right now. I, I last week came out on, on another platform and said, look, I think Paul Cole is the most underestimated uh, sportsman 
underrated sportsman here in New Zealand. I'm going to say this. I think the Barrett brothers are the most overrated oh, athletes please. in New Come Zealand on. sport. Can we can we stop this? Can we stop this narrative? Oh, but they grew up in the backyard playing each other together. I don't give a damn. Are you talking about I don't give a damn. Player of the year two times, oh, mate. Oh, come on, mate. Look. Actually, the guy that needs to start either at fullback or first five this weekend is Stephen Perifetta. Give the guy oh, a chance. Beautifully balanced. Sake, okay. Sake, now, he's a super rugby flat track bully beating up on Australian sides, scoring five well, welcome tries. welcome to the All Blacks. Well, that's what we are. That's what, that's we, what are. we are. These but days, give this mate. guy a chance. The Barrett boys, every chance. Scott Barrett, overrated. Scott Bowden Barrett, Barrett cannot. Cannot. number six. We've got who else is actually going to actually muscle up on number six well, on the blind side? It's not your belt. Ethan your Blackadder. You want is it? Ethan Black out if he wasn't Wadi, is it? Throwing 20 yard passes off the wrong hand, the only break we get in the goddamn first half, mate. He's not my boy. We're arguing He's on never the same been thing. my boy. Do you know what this is? He's never been my okay, boy. Okay, let us go back and let us blame whoever it is you wanted from 2017. I also blame uh, New Zealand rugby, who have now got absolutely sucked into this aerial netball, bing, bing bong, ping pong basketball that is super rugby, which is absolutely brilliant when you're dicking a team called the Melbourne Rebels. But when you come up against 15 guys in green jerseys who look like muscle men who just sit there and smack you yeah, down every but, time you run up, we don't prepare for that anymore, yeah, but mate. Who was the who were the guys that completely undermined that competition. It's not the current guys, it's the previous administration. I'll keep saying this. Steve Chu, we gave him a Queen's Honour. Steve Hansen for pulling players out and telling them how damn tough the game is and you need to rest. And, and, and you know, because you don't want to get tired. I mean, just continually eroding. It's all about me, me, me. Bringing in 25 staff so our players no longer have to think for themselves. Forget being empowered. You come in at half time and we'll tell you you need to change the game plan. Okay, I so mean, we're it is about, appalling. Again, we're talking and, about... and, and, and another thing, what have we not learned here? When is Rico Awani a centre? Yeah. He's a damn yeah. winger. He's a winger. Jack Goodyear is your centre. Oh, people go, but he's not fast enough. No, but he reads defences. He gets the best out of David Harvili. He get he the wingers get the best by having a guy like that in your midfield, man. Stop looking at the flash and trash that is Super Rugby and start looking at the intellect. Well, this is the problem that New Zealand rugby has, though, because they Dow just painted themselves into such a corner. They are so addicted to this. Because this is they this is what they think that the public want to see. You know, I don't know who Super Rugby sells to. Yes, whatever audience it is loves the fact that nineteen tries are scored mm. in a game. But the result of that is when we play test match rugby, we have players that actually don't understand that you have to retain the ball, that you actually have oh. to make yards, that it's actually really difficult. The only time, if you looked at that South African game, that we made any progress at all was on broken play, which is like super rugby. When Bowden Barrett's got 10 metres in front of him and can beat a man, he'll skin that guy. But the problem is that doesn't happen in, in test match rugby. You've got a guy on your face when you catch the ball. How many times have our guys in super rugby faced an up and under with a guy that is actually tackling them before they hit the ground? Okay. It doesn't happen, mate. We're not prepared for test match rugby. Okay, so, so repeat after me. After you. The Barrett boys are the most overrated oh, rugby look, players. I could go through the whole bloody yeah, team, yeah, mate. I know, but I'm just saying, I'm sick of that narrative. I'm sick of the narrative. Well, change the, the narrative then. Yeah, Give well, me a team that's going to beat South Africa okay. this weekend, mate. Well, well, Pick me 15 I players. Can't. I can't. And that squad in South Africa. Who's going to go out there and win in Joburg? The only guys you're going to keep in that front row are Tokalahi, the hooker, you're going to keep... Um, I'll you, play two new ones, mate. I'll baby black the front row. Yeah, oh, me too. Angus Tabak, goodbye. Oh, Offer, the, goodbye. The most, Nepo, goodbye. The, the most overrated Catch All Blacks France, you guys. I have seen for a long, long time. Angus Tabak, how is that guy even playing super rugby, let alone playing at All Blacks? Because Black he's level? a ball-playing prop and he's mobile. And his Instagram account is mate, full of followers, Watto. Artie Sevilla, Sam Whitelock... And possibly Tokalahi, the only three players in that entire forward pack you're going to keep remotely. See, keep. I would have got, see, and, and I, I said this on Friday. I said if I was a coach Bring Foster. Bring in a guy like Kurt Eklund, too. Well, I, I said if I was Foster, I would have walked into that dressing room. I would have pointed to Whitelock and Adi and said, everyone out. You guys pick the team. You guys pick who you honestly believe is capable of beating South Africa. You guys pick it, because I'm not going to pick it. Because I'm picking a team and none of these guys perform for me. So you guys actually pick that team. Yeah, but, but, Our chances of winning in Joburg are what? Five percent. Oh, really? Four percent. Oh, please. Three percent. You're talking two percent is what you're talking, I aren't am. you? I'm being generous. You're saying that we've got no chance. Got none. Hey, when did you? When do you ever in the whole of your life can ever, I say? Can ever I talk say about this? an All Black side? The first time, the first time in my life, I didn't wake up in the middle of the night and watch the All Blacks oh, in see, South they, Africa. See, I, I, I did. I didn't because, because I, I couldn't handle the depression. I mate. stupidly thought. I couldn't thought. handle the. I didn't have money for the psychiatrist. I didn't have money. My mental health, you know, it's marginal at the best of time, Marty. I. I 
I couldn't well, do hang it. on a second, I but don't do you it. just dial your nutritionist, your health trainer, your haircut 100 boy, your tattooist like every other all black, your social media manager? I'm not One a, of those people should I, be able to help you, shouldn't they? I'm not a member of the Blues. See, this is where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. No, but it is, though. You, I mean, look, they're and, and so over resourced, aren't they? I look, I, look, I look at my Man United side, and the, the parallels with the All Blacks are so, so similar. Here we are, losing to Brighton on the opening day of the season with the same woeful bunch of losers that were losers last year and losers the year before. And you know what the CEO said last week? He said, well, for the first time ever, we've got more Instagram followers than Barcelona. I want to punch that guy in the face. If I was big and brave enough, I'd punch you in the face, but, Mr. CEO of Man United. Marty. What kind of loser are you, mate? Marty, Nothing matters apart from winning on the goddamn pitch. The Players Association. This is a Players Association who continue to demand more and ask more and ask more. And the more money seems to come into the game, the more backwards we go. Look at the netball team as well. That netball team, we should be having the same discussion. Oh, we won a bronze medal at the Commonwealth no, Games. No, 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 we spoke to, we no, spoke. no, no, no. We had, a, we had four teams who could potentially win it, and we finished third. I'm sorry. Third is failure that's in netball. What, that's what Nolan told us. The women's women, Cricket team, the women's cricket team get a bronze, and suddenly it's all okay. Well, I think no, that, no, 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 that no, was an no. achievement. No, that oh, was come an achievement, on, mate. It was an the achievement. fact we, we got dick bite and then we came back and we beat them. You got to celebrate oh, that. Oh, you don't, mate. It shouldn't even be at the Commonwealth Games. Well, okay, Marty. let's not talk. About, okay, well, right, here's a here's a question for you. As far as the All Blacks go, why don't we put the Warriors under the same scrutiny? Here are guys that obviously against South Sydney didn't want to be there. Stacey Jones turns around and says they didn't want to get physical. We've we've been, already heard from. Coach Nathan Brown, who's left, of course, because his family can't live in New Zealand because they didn't know the New Zealand Warriors were a New Zealand Warriors side, actually. That, and then he said that they gave up against Melbourne. You've got, um, uh, uh, who is it, Jazz, Jazz Artavanga saying they're mentally weak. You've got Tohu Harris saying that the players give up. You've got Reese Walsh himself criticising the players, saying that you know they make dumb decisions. These guys get all the slack cut in the world. I heard Stacey Jones on the weekend say, you will be living in a suitcase. Mate, guess what happens next year when you come home? Every two weeks you go and live in a suitcase in Australia. What the hell changes here? And where's Aaron Gate been for the last six or seven months? Living in a damn suitcase riding for Black Spoke Racing in in Europe, just trying to chase it, basically living on nothing, hoping that he auditions well enough to maybe, to maybe get an opportunity at the highest level. Where do you think young Sam Tanner's been over the last six months? He's been training what is what he's been doing. Doing. And, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. I am sick and tired of the violence coming out for our most resourced teams. And we got suck it in. Oh, the poor Warriors. Um, you don't get it. You the don't poor understand. All Blacks. You we don't, don't get it. it. I am just I tell you what, I do so get it. over do it. Do you know what I get? I get that you lot, the All Blacks, and you lot, the Warriors, are just not good enough. And the netball team. Well, the netball team got a bronze, mate. I'm celebrating that. We got a medal of the Games. Actually, speaking of the games, can we segue into that? We could talk about the All Blacks all day, as everyone could. But again, all of us, all we can do is criticise. Can I? All we can do is 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 do everything apart from find the one solution we need, which is how the hell do we win a test match this weekend with that group of players? You can't. You can't. And so the selectors, but this is Ian Foster. These guys are at the front of it. They're a really, really good players. Tom Robertson for the Blues. Give him a chance. I don't know whether his level is at all black level or not. Played pretty well for the Blues. Give the guy a chance. Let's go back to the baby blacks of 86. Let's give the guys like the Ecklands a chance and some of these other players from around the country. You know... They um, don't have the Instagram numbers, Mark. That's the point. Oh, and they haven't been on the cover of Women's Day. That's it. And they didn't go through Auckland Grammar School That's when we were it. too cool for school That's with it. the Iwani brothers. Hey, we lose to France, but I'll get my Instagram out and show everybody that I scored two tries in that loss and I'll have flames coming off the back of my boots because it's all about me. me. Apologise to me. Mark Robinson needs to fall on his sword as well. He this, does. This is, you know... And, he does. And this is what the, the most Weasley thing about it. The board... Who appointed Foster and Mark Robinson? These are the these are these are the people that I've got in my crosshairs, because if you are going to sack that coach and you're going to make wholesale changes, well then you donutters and, and and who are living off the world's biggest gravy train, being part of that sports administration. Do you know what some of those board members do? I got told by a board member about two months ago. He was taken to the F1 because of a new sponsor, Ineos of of the All Blacks, right? And he's standing in the pits next to Lewis Hamilton. That's how they live their lives. I- these people, they do not pay for a cup of coffee. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, and yet they will make the same decisions that 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 they made to appoint that coach, to sack the same coach, and not one of them falls on their sword. Not one of them. No, and again, and we all knew that Robertson was going to be the new CEO off the back of Steve Chu. Yet we are told, yet we are constantly told that, hang on a minute, it's a transparent process. We've gone right around the world to appoint these guys. No, you haven't. No. You know why I think the All Blacks lost? They had their $5,000 watches were a couple of minutes out and they were two minutes late to every, every damn breakdown. breakdown. Yeah, you know, 
Commonwealth Games, let's talk about the Commonwealth Games because I have absolutely adored the last two weeks and I know that there's a lot of people who, who sit there and they you know they deride this competition. Sitting there in front of the TV night after night, we have all of those sports to watch. And the overachievement, look, you know, Lewis Clairbert, uh, who, who sets a PB at Commonwealth Games, which would have won a gold medal last year. Um, Tom Walsh goes back to back at the Commonwealth Games. You've got um, Aaron Gate, who scores, what, four, four gold medals. He comes off his bike after the 4,000 metre pursuit, after the after the team pursuit, and gets Points 160 race. Ks and races and wins. Now, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, how many coaches do those guys need? How many coaches, how many fluffers, how many minders, how many times do they get told that yeah. you, they have to... Re and these guys are absolute champions, not to mention the women that have done this. We had a hammer thrower there who was riddled with COVID. Do you know what she did? She got out of bed and she got a bloody silver medal, mate. She didn't actually have to sit there and get molly coddled and told that, oh, no, you're too sick to play, you're this and you're that. She actually went and did no, it. No, because, because in individual sports, you cannot hide. If you have weaknesses, they are there and you are exposed and it is a very, very lonely place. The reason why you're trying to make it in cycling, you've got to be so incredibly tough. You've got to have mental fortitude. You can't survive without it. And this is what we should be learning when it comes to the All Blacks, when it comes to the Warriors. Let's forget the shoulder down and how they look and how buff they are. Let's start testing the mental side. I've said this a hundred times before, Marty. Let's get the SAS and these armed forces specialists in who can actually, you know, to get into the SAS, it's not about necessarily how good a shot you are or how fast you are over 10K. It's about how you handle sleep deprivation, huge loads, huge volumes under incredible mental duress. It's right there. It's right there for everybody to take. You know, the Warriors, go out, go and see, go and grab some of our former cyclists, some of our former rowers. Let them run an eye over your damn program. Oh, no, but we just do what every other... Oh, no, 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 Cameron George always says, oh, we're so empathetic about his personal circumstances. Mate, nobody wants to play for your stupid club, mate. No and one wants to play for nobody, them. I tell you, if I sat down and were able to have honest conversations with Fauno Blake, with Torhu Harris, uh, with Penny, give me Josh Curran, and, and sat down with these guys and say, if you could, would you bail on this load of absolute mm -hmm. shite? And I bet they all would. I bet they all would if they absolutely could. Instead, we get told by the CEO that, oh, we're winning from day yeah, one of but, training camp. Ma, we're winning from the ma, day one but, of next. But, Marty, when is a contract a contract, well, mate? A all contract, these guys mate. just break contracts contract. all the time. Not a contract. All think they're going to come over here. I mean, Cameron George, the owners, they've all just got to move on. They can join the All Black management and just go. Go. Let's bring through the Commonwealth Games can I tell coaches. You that let's bring our Commonwealth Games athletes into pick sides. And let's get this damn media in this country to shift their thinking and and stop putting these teams constantly on the front pages of the damn papers and this thing, oh yeah, but the Commonwealth Games and those athletes, it's really only significant once every four years. Rubbish. Rubbish. Henry Ford, he said, if I once asked the customer what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. I gave them the damn car. <laughs> <laughs> Build it and they will come. Tell me what your favourite Commonwealth Games moments were. Well, look, I, I think it's it's very hard to go past Lewis Clearbert because genuinely world class. You're up against um, world class uh, competition. A lot of international powerhouses like the Australians, Canadians, British, uh, big things. I think that the one I'm going to talk about, and people will go, what? I'm actually going to talk about Sam Tanner in the 1500 metres. I Finish, love that race, Finishing mate. I love sixth. That race. But hang on, before 20, 20, we, just let me interrupt you. Before we start, though, that is because both you and me grew up on 1500s, 1500 metres being the ripped. glamour event of the Olympic Games, and black singlets were in that race. And when when Willis when Nick Willis finally came through and started competing, and then in China and that, when he won his first medal at the, at the Olympics, that was my favourite moment above all the gold yep. medals because... I grew up on this. I grew up yep. on the legend of love. Like I grew up on the legend of Snell and these guys. And that, to me, to see a black singlet in that race epitomises what these games are about. Well, it's still a blue ribbon event. It's still got the African nations. But I want to put this in context. This kid is 21 years of age. In that race, he ran faster than John Walker ever run over 1,500 metres. He ran faster than Peter Snell's ever run over 1,500 metres. He is second now all time. The kid is 21 years of age. What a talent. Youngest ever sub four minute miler at 17 to come out of this country. Wow. The future is bright. But hey, let's go and give all the media coverage 
to the damn women's cricket team who finished third. And the netball team who finished third. They couldn't make their team. And the netballers aren't happy about it. And if you ask the White Ferns themselves, we got them on the program. Oh, they were crying. They were so emotional. Finally, finally, we've righted all the wrongs. No, you haven't. All the wrongs, mate. All they've done is they've achieved something they can put in the bank and go, hey, that's not what we wanted, but at least we've got that. I admire that. What the hell? Yeah, we're we're allowed to kick them when they're down, like at the One Day World Cup. They bounced back from a horror against England and actually showed some strength and some mental fortitude. Hey. and they came back and they beat that same hey, team again. Off the back of the eight hours training, they do a week well onto them. Oh, please, mate. It's about time that people like you grew up when it comes to women's sport and actually acknowledge the effort that's going into this. Oh. <laughs> God, you would go well in the media. <laughs> you would go well in the media the moment they're criticised. Hey, you must be a chauvinist. Yet, hey, we want it to be treated equally, but the moment you criticise us, you're a chauvinist. No, I'm not. Happy to celebrate a lot of other women's sport. All right, give us your call then for the end of the week, whatever happens in Joburg and whatever happens with the coaching situation. Well, look, Foster's gone whether he likes it or not. The New Zealand public cannot do this anymore. It's not good for the all-black brand. We are simply just not winning. It's the definition of, definition of insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Um, the All Blacks will be beaten. I think they'll be beaten comfortably. Um, in fact, I think it'll be one of those head-down, drop-your-head performances where we will absolutely hit rock bottom. Change will need to come. Um, And with change, though, it's also going to require a different group of selectors to come in and make some wholesale changes. Because you're right, the players need to be held accountable. And this is just simply not good enough. Uh, You know, super rugby form doesn't mean a lot. It means zero, mate. It means zero. It absolutely zero. But what we've got to go back, I want to see New Zealand rugby going to Sky Television saying, you've got, you're our media partner here. Stop broadcasting schoolboy rugby. I want you to start broadcasting senior club rugby. Let's get that back. So let's start taking the size factor at school out of it. Let's start taking home too cool for school. Well let's find out how good you are when you get to a school when you get to a senior club level. Let's start putting emphasis back on this Mitre 10 Cup. Let's stop resting and rotating players in super rugby. And let's maybe just try and re-establish some sort of relationship with South African rugby so we're playing them on a little bit more of a regular basis. So there's a whole lot of things need to happen here. But at the moment, it's all about the money. It's all about the players associated. That players association are dangerous. They're dangerous across a lot of sports. This is a trade union who will convince us that life is tough and life ain't tough. I tell you what, you know, I've told you the Vinokurov story, haven't I? The mm. cycling story about yeah. Vinokurov, the cyclist, getting dropped, riding back onto the front of a bunch with Lance Armstrong, attacking again, getting dropped, riding back on. And the great quote, never underestimate a man brought up on ration cabbage. That guy's as hard as he was hard because he was riding his way out of poverty. You know, how much adversity have our rugby players really ever faced? Do they ever face anything? Oh, they tell you how passionate they are. But you only really find that out in the face of adversity. I mean, TJ Perinara is going through it at the moment to a degree. But these guys have just got to get a reality check. Stop forgetting how much money they're getting paid overseas. And therefore, hey, in comparison, we're getting hard done by. Not interested. Not interested. Their job is to win test matches for New Zealand, full stop. That is it. That is your job. Your job is not to have Instagram followers. Your job is not to get, collect your freebies and your air points you, and all of that. Your job you, is to win test matches for New Zealand. And if you can't do that, then you must be removed from your job. Well said, Martin. That's probably the most intelligent thing you said. What, but let's just go back to the Barrett brothers. Devlin. This should be good. The Platform.